Hello, my friends, and welcome to another one of these deep dive reviews. Today's video is going to be on Korean skincare brands for mature skin. After much internal debate, I decided to call this video that concept because it kind of is. We're going to be talking about an expensive Hanbang Korean skincare brand, but also an affordable Hanbang Korean skincare brand. I did buy everything in today's video. I bought a set of the History of Who minis that I used for two weeks, and I also bought three products from formerly Misha's Chogong Jean line. Now it's its own brand. We'll, we'll talk all about that and where to get the best deals on these products. And I used those for two weeks, and then for this final week, I kind of just used my favorites from both brands. I have to admit, I'm so happy with my skin at this point. I, I really am. But ultimately, kind of relieved to tell you that in the end, if you do decide to try anything I share with you in this video, I don't think you actually have to break the bank to do it. But all of that will be explained in today's video. As always, timestamps and links are in the description box below, and I'll also include my discount codes at YesStyle and StyleVana if you want to get an additional discount while helping to support the channel. Okay, let's get into it. Let's just go in chronological order and start with the history of of who. So I bought a set of six minis on YesStyle. It was about $35 at the time I bought it. I've seen the price fluctuate on this from $30 to $35. It's always pretty affordable. And it seemed like a really good way to try out this brand that seems to be kind of in the same category as Suwasu, as Amore Pacific. I confess that at the time I placed this order, I didn't know too much about the history of Who, and I also confess to you that now that I've looked into it, I am not sure this is an easy brand to get for those of us in the US. I did find the history of who.ca, so you may be able to get this more easily if you're in Canada, but don't worry about any of that because ultimately what I'm gonna tell you is if you decide to try this brand, just get the set that I bought. Because I decided at one point to calculate the value of these minis, and while I never succeeded because I never got the prices of every one of these products, let me just tell you that the uh, the essence that I'm gonna call more of a serum is, it's about a $31 value. And the moisturizer, 43. So you see what I'm saying here, the mini set, it's not just a good way to sample the brand, it's a, it's a really good value. So I'll start with a little bit about the history of Who, but again, I'm super limited in telling you more about the brand. I would recommend the monodist here on YouTube if you want more information. She lives in Korea, and if I understand correctly, she works with these brands, so she knows way more than I do about the, uh, the details of the brand. What I can tell you is that this appears to be another Hanbang brand, which means based in traditional Chinese medicine. You'll see a lot of emphasis on ingredients like ginseng, but it doesn't stop there. I'll put up the ingredients list for one of the products where I highlighted all of their herbs. It's a, I believe, 26 herb blend. And I always feel like this is kind of funny to talk about because in some ways, when I look at ingredients lists, my eyes tend to gravitate towards the chemical compounds that have a lot of research behind them, niacinamide, panthenol, etc. And I don't always place a lot of weight on plant extracts because when you, when you really think about it, a plant extract is, it's kind of, it's got its own ingredients list. And it often kind of reads like a skincare product. You know, you have your active ingredients in your plants, right? This is the exact same reason we say, if you have a cold, drink orange juice because orange juice contains vitamin C as well as a whole lot of other things. <laughs> I've honestly had to accept that with Hanbang, you kind of do have to look at the herbs or maybe to not exhaust your brain capacity, maybe just think of it as kind of just one concept. I'm not gonna sit here and go over every one of these herbs because it would make a way longer video and I don't honestly think you even want me to. But suffice to say, as much as I was kind of a skeptic of plant ingredients and herbs originally, I've just come to accept that these Hanbang-based brands, they do something for my skin in a very big way. Now this won't work out for everyone. These are products that do contain fragrance. And in fact, I actually have to say, I don't love the smell of the history of Who. 
In comparison to brands like Duminbi, as well as Suisu, it smells more like a 1980s perfume, maybe? That may be a terrible scent description. I don't have the strongest nose in the first place, but yeah, it just has a perfume smell to me. So the sampler set that I bought is from the History of Who's Chiangadin line, which is targeting people who are over 40, with dry skin, with fine lines and wrinkles. And the kit comes with a toner. It does have a different name. It's called the Radiant Rejuvenating Balancer. But if you get really into K-beauty, you'll start to notice that the word balancer is often used to describe a toner product. This one contains wild ginseng and that 26 herb blend I was mentioning. It is meant to balance the pH of your skin and prep your skin for better absorption of whatever you apply afterwards. I feel like I didn't think that I was going to love this, but I have to admit in the end here, this is one of my favorite products and it's the one product that I might consider buying in the full size. It's actually on the Yes Style website in the full size, and it's not too expensive, considering you get five fluid ounces of this very thick toner for around 82-ish dollars. It's not too bad. And what it reminds me of is the Suisu First Care Activating Serum, very similar concept to that. In fact, if you like the Suisu, I, I do think you'll like the history of Who as well. You get a sample of the very expensive Radiant Regenerating Essence, which I did finish this one off, but thankfully I have clips showing the application of all of these. This is, I would say a serum, but it's more of a creamy serum. And as a person with dry skin, this creamy texture, it feels amazing to apply. It says it targets skin elasticity, again with those ingredients, including ginseng. But in all truth, I felt like surprisingly, at the end of two weeks of trying this, I wasn't yet that sold on this. I really had to figure out where I wanted to put this in my routine, and I did, and I'll come back to this later in this video. You get an emulsion. I've talked about this product category before. It's really a light moisturizer. This one targets nutrition as well as, of course, light moisture to your skin. I tend to not love this category, but this one grew on me. I ended up really liking this towards the end of the two weeks. It's light, but it's not too light. You know, you only get five milliliters of the eye cream, but I have still not finished this in the two weeks of using this. It's a, it's a good sample size, it really is. And as for the eye cream, I admit I did like this one, but it didn't become a love for me. It does claim to tighten and firm, and it is really nice to apply. It seems to have some kind of reflective properties to it so that it gives that cosmetic brightening effect that I do like in an eye cream. You get a cream, and this has to be one of the thickest creams I've ever encountered. This one says it targets damage as well as aging, and I believe that. I believe that just from the texture alone. Whoa, it is so so thick, but it's this very strange situation that I don't think has really happened to me as a person with dry skin, where towards the end of the two weeks, I was a little tired of dealing with just how thick this one is. Is it possible for a cream to be too thick for dry skin? Maybe. And I think what it really is for me is that I had trouble mixing the oil into this, and I do like to mix oil into my moisturizers. I think it's a really good way to apply oils. And this just kind of felt like I was making a, a vinaigrette dressing. <laughs> Mix oil and vinegar, come on, come on, mix together, come on. <laughs> this is not to say that this is not a good cream at all. I think it's a great cream. I'm just personally happy to tell you that it didn't perfectly align with my preferences, which makes it really easy to not buy this in the full size because I do believe it's around 300 or more. Yeah, you know, I'm just happy that I'm not deeply in love with it. That's, that's all I'm saying, still a good product. And then finally, what has to be the most intriguing item in this kit, this is the Wild Ginseng Oil. This says it contains over 50% wild ginseng extract. And I really did like this one. I like oils, I like ginseng. The stars were aligning with this, but I can't find it anywhere. I mean, I did find it on Style Vana, and I'm a little tempted to buy it because I did like it. It's still $120 on style vana for a 30 milliliter bottle that's one fluid ounce. The strange thing about this is that it is really hard to find and I think what's going on with this is that if you look at the ingredients list, that very last ingredient is Liliol. 
It's a fragrance ingredient that came under scrutiny kind of last year, I think, for uh, a study that came out and showed it may cause infertility in rats. There was just a whole thing around it, and uh, I'm not a rat, so I'm not super worried about it. Mickey Mouse should be, because I'm onto him. I am onto him. I'm not gonna judge anybody who is avoiding that ingredient. It's just that th this is all to tell you this is my theory for why this might be a little hard to find at this moment. But again, it's in the kit. The kit lasted me for two weeks for, you know, un under $35 because I always order from YesStyle when they have a 15% off coupon. Now the next two weeks I moved on to Misha's Chogongjin line and I do have some things to explain here because I figured out a little more about it now. So apparently this was Misha's ginseng line originally, but now it seems they're really trying to become their own brand. I ordered these products off YesStyle. I did talk about how they had the 21 days availability when I ordered them, but I was surprised how quickly I received these. What I noticed is you can still go to the Misha website, the Misha US website, and buy these. Or you can go on chogongjin.us if you're in the US and you're gonna pay a lot more for these. And I bought from three different lines just to kind of get a feel for this brand. I didn't know if I was going to love them. Spoiler, I do. <laughs> but I'm just gonna talk about the lines that I tried. So I bought from the G... G I'm really trying to pronounce these correctly. I'm so sorry if I get things wrong. It's my American accent. <laughs> my Southern American accent, but anyway, the Jimsul line here is the line that is rich in royal jelly. And this is the line that is meant to calm stressed skin. It's meant to aid in boosting collagen production, assist your skin's barrier. And so I bought the Jin Eye Cream. I feel like a lot of eye creams have ingredients that are meant to, you know, address fine lines or address brightening, but very few eye creams address a healthy barrier under your eyes. And in fact, it still does claim to help with smoothing and reducing puffiness. Now again, the price points on these are all kinds of strange. On the Chogongjin website, this is $54, still for one fluid ounce. On YesStyle, it's around $29. Again, $29 for one fluid ounce of eye cream breaks down to about $15 for a half ounce which is our US standard size. So you see what I'm saying about this ultimately kind of being almost affordable. And do you know, I absolutely ended up loving this eye cream. It has such an incredible texture to it. It has a hanbang smell, so it does smell herbal, but not in that perfumed way that History of Who smells. It just, it honestly smells like suisu. This smells more expensive than it is. And using it has felt like I've really just been putting the health of my under eye area first. Just, just taking good care of it. I also bought from the So Sang line, and this is the Red Ginseng line, Korean Red Ginseng line. Now we've talked about the differences in ginseng. There is your fresh ginseng, which contains fewer of those ginsenicide compounds, and then you have red ginseng, your aged form, which has more of those ginsenicides. And there's been a lot of research into those showing that they really may be incredible for anti-aging benefits. That sound was me knocking this over. You know, you know how it is. This line claims to plump, repair, and recharge, and this specific product says it uplifts and firms your skin. It's always nice to have your products really, you know, say kind words to your skin. The funny thing about this is that the brand says it's kind of a hybrid between a toner and a serum, and I initially thought it might, again, be like the, uh, the Suisu First Care Essence. And to its credit, I would say you can use it in that way. The retail on this is $70, again, on the Chogongjin website, but over on YesStyle, it's about 40. And that is for 3.04 fluid ounces. So again, you see how these aren't breaking the bank. This is, is definitely a much more affordable hanbang option. 
But there is one more line, and that is the Jungen line, and this one contains black ginseng. That is an even more advanced form of ginseng. That is where you have the highest concentration of those ginsenicide ingredients. So I was really excited for this line. And this line has some very intense claims around it. It says that this is to tighten and lift your skin, reduce dark spots, renew the texture, and I quote, to offer a facelift. <laughs> Again, it's a little bit of a, a, a bold claim. I don't know if I would tell you that I look like I got a facelift, but I'm very happy with the results. So the cream that I purchased from this line is the Jungen Gin Cream. This might be my favorite product in this entire video. And I'm so happy to tell you that while this is $85 for 2.02 .02 fluid ounces on the Chogong Jin website on YesStyle, 44. 44. This is the exact reason why it's hard for me to be so excited about the skincare in the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. But I have a lot to tell you about this one because I actually didn't like it the first day I tried it. Okay, claim. So this one says it targets the deep signs of aging and offers hydration through a slugging mechanism. Keep that in mind. And it is a very very thick cream. I didn't know what to do with this at first. I bought this thinking that it would be kind of more of a day and night cream, but it is way too heavy for me to use during the day. But that's when it really clicked for me. This is a slugging alternative to Vaseline, to Aquaphor. It wasn't that long ago at all on this channel where I talked about how I don't really love the feel of Aquaphor. I use it because I get great results. After a few nights of using this, I realized I love this. I love this texture. It really does feel heavy. It really does feel like it locks everything in. But by morning, you don't still feel that heaviness on your face. It almost does feel like it absorbs. And oh my goodness, oh my goodness, does it ever give results, at least again for my skin type. And it does have, again, that hanbang. Oh, it smells like suisu. <laughs> except it was $44 instead. <laughs> There's a few more things that I want you to know before you commit to buying these, things that I didn't know when I made these purchases. So, you may have noticed that a lot of these products contain an ingredient called velvet extract. Listen, when I bought these, I was over here going velvet extract. That's a texture. I have plenty of velvet clothes. I'm pretty sure that if I rub those across my skin, I'm not gonna see a lot of skincare benefits. It turns out that's referring to something else. And first, let me tell you that one of the big claims with Misha, as well as this brand, is that they are cruelty-free. This velvet extract ingredient is from deer antlers. I'm cutting into this video with even more information because I don't know how you all feel, but I was a little nervous. I love animals and I don't want to harm them. So here's much more information. First of all, this does date back 2,000 years in traditional Chinese medicine, but these days the primary source for this deer antler velvet is New Zealand farms, wherein the deer are cared for by hobbits. Okay, in nature, deer do naturally drop their antlers. It's not the prettiest process, but it really does happen naturally. However, it seems that surgery is required to get the full spectrum of benefits. And that never sounds good to me. However, there really are a lot of even primary sources addressing the analgesia to use on these deer so that they don't endure any kind of suffering. Removal is a quick process, no joke. These sources say 30 to 60 seconds to remove the velvet and then the deer just go back on the farm and resume their regular life with some claiming this has additional benefits in that it reduces fighting among these deer. In terms of applications, I did find kind of a lot of information, but not a lot of human studies. I do think more is needed there. What did surprise me is that apparently this can be used as a supplement for dogs and cats. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you this because again, I want you to know what you're buying. And I had no idea when I bought these that they contained deer antlers. So to give you some final thoughts, I wanna talk about the last week, this past week. What I did is I used my favorites from both brands. And I realized that I prefer the Chogong Jean 
cream products. And I guess you could say I prefer the more runny products from the history of Who. I do love the oil, I do love the balancer, and I came to really appreciate the essence when I put in between that the Chogong Jean. So the history of Who balancer followed by the Jean essence and then followed by the history of Who serum. I feel like that was really bringing out the best of all of these products. And I don't think you necessarily have to exclusively buy these products. I mean, you could <laughs> you could make a, a great routine with other brands. But yeah, that ended up being the sweet spot for me. And wow, have I ever been happy in this past week with my skin. I really have. I had a rough breakout in week four. But, you know, like I've talked about before, I'm so glad that I'm at a point in skincare where I know that it can be from external factors instead of the products I'm currently using. Oh yeah, it absolutely can. I had a lot of stress going on and, you know, I really proved to myself that it wasn't these products in this past week. But I was thinking, I woke up today and I was looking in the mirror and I was thinking, I look like I'm wearing foundation. I'm not, I still have, I still have a little pimple healing down on my chin, but oh, my skin looks good. But again, if you are interested in trying any of these, I, I mean, I really, again, think the little sampler set is the way to go. And yeah, I really like this brand's creams. So that's it for my journey into some of the Korean skincare brands that are aimed at a more mature skin audience. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know if any of you have tried these. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you all next time.